stream.tv and also for YouTube for people to watch at their leisure. I'm working in my new Mythomorphia book, colouring book by Kirby Ozan. And I'm on the practice page because I want to practice, um, I want to have a look at all the different watercolour um, things that I can work with. I can't work with acrylics or anything that's a lot of mixing. Um, so I'm restricted to my ink tense pencils, my watercolour pencils, my pastel pencils, my Dr. Martin's Hydrus watercolours, uh, my professional watercolours, my little book of watercolours and my little pan of watercolours. So I thought this particular page I was going to have a practice of how to use them. So the first ones I'm going to use are my Dr. Martin's Hydrus watercolours. These are amazing. They come in three different sets or you can buy them individually. And I've got two drops and a little spray of water in here and you really do not need more than that. You don't need to fill an ice cube tray. I once watched somebody with an ice cube tray um, filling it full. Mine dry overnight and then I can reconstitute them very quickly. The Hydrus watercolours are professional watercolours. They are light fast. There is another set of Dr Martin's um, other colours, I can't remember what they call them at the moment, they are the Dr Martins but they're not fine art, they're more of an ink, they're more ink based uh, but they have some fantastic wonderful pinks, purples, teals um, but this is a professional watercolour set so I can put a tiny amount of, or of I've made a red card because I didn't have a red card, I forgot to buy it, um, I've made an orange, in fact that's probably a little bit too much for a red card and then I took put a touch of that into the uh, lemon yellow to make a cadmium yellow because I don't have a cadmium yellow um, I have a gamboge so I put a tiny sorry to put a tiny touch of gamboge into the yellow to make um, the cadmium yellow and then I've put a little bit of um, the red into the uh, lemon yellow to make an orange so you can make all sorts of colours. And over here I've made a couple of greens because I only have phthalo green and phthalo blue. And I've mixed these two together. And when you put the half the paintbrush into one and then touch another, which is why I didn't want to do it actually on in the palette, I did it here because I want to keep these two separate. But if you put a, a tiny amount of the blue onto a tiny amount of the green of the phthalo, you get these amazing colours. Oops. So there is a green in there, a teal, and then you've got the vivid phthalo blue going to phthalo green. So you get the beautiful transition, whoopsie, of the greens and the blues. And I really like that effect. So I thought that would look really good in this book with all these fishes and dragons and things. But I haven't tried it with the oranges and the yellows. I've only tried it with a phthalo blue and phthalo green. So I've been through this little book and I've made little notes of how I want to use the book and what I want to colour it in. But I just needed wanted to play with these hydras because I've used them in lots of different ways. Um, but I also thought about using it kind of in a, in a muted way to see just how pale I can get these. Now they are in my little book of watercolours here. I'm just going to have to move that because I'm desperate not to make a mark. So in here are hydras and there is a drop of every colour I have. And I think I've got 19 or 20 colours. But just the tiniest drop. It gives you really nice colours. So that's the drop there. So you can get from very dark to very pale. So the versatility of these 
is very much like the dot the uh, ink tense pencils you've got that really drip dark bright color or you can have a more muted color um, where's the other ones? The other ones on the other side. So, you know, you've got the purples. So you can, uh, and I love the fact that I've got them in my little book because I don't have to carry 20 little bottles with me. Um, so they're in here, but they are very messy. But, you know, they don't go anywhere. They only stay here. But there's only one drop. And you have to, you have to do it flat. You have to hold this flat because if it runs, your colour will run because they are just like water. They are liquid, but they are absolutely amazing. Anybody else got any questions? So welcome to Bunny's Designs. As I say, this is a live stream with live peoples. And I'm working in this mythomorphia. Um, and I'm having a play, and we do have a. Um, I just have to bend that back, break my heart to do that, but I will do it. I'm going to do this fish because as soon as I saw it, I thought about those phthalo colours. But I work with a damp brush, so I wet the brush and then I twist it on a baby wipe, so it's damp. And then I touch. I will do this here, and then I shall zoom in and show how I do it normally. So a damp brush twisted. It's almost probably probably a clean baby wipe. So sorry about the oopsie. Sorry about the crinkling. So I'll have a, a clean baby wipe. And so we dunk and twist and then I'm going to touch a little bit of that and a little bit of green and you can see the colour will change and that's what I want to happen. I kind of want this, you know, is it blue, is it green kind of thing going on. And if you work just damp it'll do quite nicely. And um, while I'm here, I might as well actually, oops, I should have done that on that one. I've got two baby wipes. I've got a dirty one and a, and a little cleaner one. Um, we'll try a yellow. Come here, Alfie. Alfie. Alfie, what's this? Oh, it's a good boy. Who's a good boy? Can you come back and sit under there, please? Thank you. Good boy. You're going to take up and go to sleep. <laughs> um, and then let's just see if we can put a bit of a bit of kind of red in there. I want to try and get some really nice effects for these dragons. Now, what we might have to do is to mix these back into a watercolor again, because you get bits, but it doesn't take long to disintegrate them back into a, a watercolour. So that's not very vibrant that one, just do that one. Because I did mix a lot of these colours myself. So again, it's very vibrant. So I think these would be quite nice colours for, for the dragons. So I'm going to do this little fish and I think um, I want it to work in a slightly different way but I'm not sure I can today. Just a second. Let me have a look. This is the practice page so I can do lots of things. And I don't really like that. I've done that. 
can use a smaller brush actually I think smaller brush so that is more kind of full-on color have a quid of a practice and I actually do I don't like this but never mind I've done it now the blue is a lot stronger than the green so it's not kind of morphing into what I wanted it to but it's going to be very vivid so it's okay and this is a practice page so not to worry Nigel, you need to let him out because he was doing the dance. Sorry. No, I've got, yeah, I've got the pair of the clothes in my hand. I'm not going to Well, just ask that to other two. Come on, Alfie. Right, so I need to push Alfie. that like this. Come on, Alfie. It's a bit different. I just don't like the colours. Yeah, Dr. Martin's Hydras. See if I can zoom in a bit. Um, just let me just drop this down. So you can see you can see that so although it's quite nice it's not as good as I'd wanted that lovely transition of color but we are in the crease so I've got some some green on there so I would think you would call that phthalo turquoise They are extremely vibrant. So I'll just put that there. <clears throat> so I think we're going here. Um, try this thinner brush. It's a long time since I played with these, so unfortunately the brain's uh, the brain's not remembered what it did. Could have been disastrous. Just got my hand in red paint. I'm such a clumsy, messy girl. <laughs> it's unbelievable. You can make a mess out of anything. Oh, bye, De Dazzle Desire. Welcome. Uh, thanks for stopping by. So I've got a little bit of colour on there. I really should have turned this page to be a bit more comfortable. So I like a bit of a mixture, but again, this was an experiment, so this is a different brush. And I think so. What I had intended to do is then dip the brush into water so it's it's manipulating it into I mean they do react just like watercolours but the best people to watch on YouTube are these professional watercolours that use watercolourists that use these um, because obviously they can do it better than me I'm just playing in a colour book and they do, none of them do fine work like this I don't think I haven't found anybody that messes about like I do <laughs> Hopefully I get so I quite like that. But again, this is a practice page. This is to practice. I'm just stroking from the green to the blue. 
I'm not using the little wells at all because I don't want to contaminate those because they're very strong colours and I'm quite happy not to do that. So I have to decide on the colour of the fish. Um, is it going to be phthalo blue or phthalo green or phthalo turquoise? Or am I going to do a French ultramarine fish, maybe? I think I'll do his, I'll do his other kind of fin and then that might give me an idea. So I hope I'm, I hope I'm oh wait a minute, let me see if I can see if I can just get my map into focus a little bit better. Oops, just a bit better. That's better, sorry about that. Right, so I'm going to do that wing. Um, I might go to a bit bigger paintbrush actually. So it's quite damp. I'm just going to tiniest amount on the end of the brush. Just the tiniest amount on the end of the brush. And then we'll go in there. Now I'm hoping that the rigger will do what it normally does and it will dilute it as we move away. I'm not very comfortable, so that's not the best way. Could just do with a bit of green coming in there. This is probably not the best brush, but we've got a bit of a morph going on from the blue to the green. Definitely think it should be a smaller brush. Oopsie. So I quite like that. Um, so we need the phthalo blue. Drag that down. To there. And then you can still move it about a bit. Just a second, you won't get a lot. I think she's got the rabbits out, so don't let him up there. Okay, well, you'll just have to... well, I can't do anything, can I? Okay. And then I'm going to start kind of backwards. I'm sorry about that. Just this is why I can't record when everybody's at home because it's just I'm in I'm in a middle room and off oh, good boy, come back. Good boy, under there. There's a good boy. Come on. Under there. Nope. I don't know that brush. I actually like this little tiny one that I used to use quite a lot. I like this little one, so I think I might go back. Oops, I just want just phthalo green in there now. So I like it better when it's diluted. If you go over the top, it's going to be fine, I think. Bit of a damp brush. And you can manoeuvre this colour afterwards. Yes, they're fantastic, aren't they? They're very vibrant. They are wonderful colours. And I, I don't think I've played with many of the other colours uh, mixing them. So 
Um, I think I might want, I can't think what colour fish, I'm going to leave that because I don't know what fish to do next. Um, I'm just going to have a bit of a play with this smaller brush. This is my Graduate De La Rione liner 10 Zero, and it's a really nice brush. So again, I'm just going to touch, stroke into the blue green. Oh, actually, I made the fish this colour now. I think, so, if I remember rightly, somebody actually does work. I'm oh, sorry, oh. Never work with animals and family. Um, I think somebody actually does carp in with these colours because they're so gorgeous. Yeah, I just can't concentrate because there's so much going on. <laughs> so I'm making a bit of a pig's ear of this, but never mind. I should have done what I normally preach is do a photocopy, but and his tail wants to then go green then no. So at least if you have a play, you know whether you want tails pale or dark, so like that. I think I like the tails to go pale. Apologies. Hunting the fish. Um, I just have a little bit of a play with this. The purple's, I think the purple is too. too bright. So I think I've got oh, the the thing with the smaller brushes is they don't stay wet long enough. So when we've got that gorgeous rigger going, that's some kind of nice action. You don't have that when you have a normal little brush. Because that dampness is never always there. So it works sometimes, but I wanted that to morph into the blue, but it's not going to do it. But this is a practice, but they are wonderful wonderful colors and let me just see if I can this is why I have different types of riggers I have I have three riggers I'm gonna go for my De La Rowney uh, graduate riggers I've got a three a two and a one and I think I'm going to use the the two. So that's going to give us the best of both worlds. It's not quite as long as my other one. Oh, the dog's escaped. Oh, no. Sorry. Alfie. Alfie. Alfie, no, the cat. I've lost the dog. Oh, my goodness. Oh, he's here. Sorry, it's okay. He's here. <laughs> oh, gosh. oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Alfie, come here, please. Oh, it's just impossible, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, brother. Alfie, come on. Alfie, come on. Now, by the way, he will. Or not it's another matter so that's probably a better one is the rigger yep. the cat's mowing at the other side of the door to tease him I've missed a bit of in there Oops. 
you've got to twist the brush to the end otherwise you don't get a neat edge so I quite like that um, Believe it. Come on, to do that. Terrible. Food. Sorry, now we have a cat mowing now. <laughs> it's a madhouse. Apologies. It's a madhouse. Oh, Carol, yes, what time are you on, Carol? I did know somebody was on today. Carol, do you want to put your link in and tell me what time? Somebody put Carol's link in, please, because I knew somebody was on today. I just didn't know what time. So I'm going to have a bit of a play with a... I made that lovely orange, didn't I? So we might have a bit of an orangey girl going on here. So thanks for stopping by guys, it was an impromptu because I'd got my wonderful Mythomorphia colour book. So, but I've forgotten how nice these were to play with and again you know there's two drops in there so there's a lot of gorgeous colour. Oops, and that was pure colour that, so I shouldn't have done that really. I wanted to spread that down there. My page is going to buckle a bit now. So this is almost neat colour that. So I can soak it up. Drag it back over here to make a nice... A nice unusual colour. So I was thinking about playing with these colours for the dragons. So it's actually a neat colour is this, just a tiny tot of water on that brush and it will make it go pale and of course this is made of that yellow so it's going to go back to pale yellow. So that's how I made it. So I really like these colours. Very vibrant. So it's another way to work. Um, I can't remember how I did. I'm going to have to watch the video and I hate watching myself. But I'm going to have to watch the video about um, the hydras um, in Kirby Rosans when I did those really fish ta uh, fishtail birds because it was very quick oh thank you thank you button addict thank you for that right so i shall carry on um so we've got another little bird there um the dragon i think i might want to do the dragon i think i might want to do this dragon here sorry about that this little this dragon I think he needs to be quite um, oranges and reds I think yeah I think so have a bit of a play um, originally I had a green bottom with a red top and then a green underbelly and purple purpley fangs purpley blue I think he wants to be kind of a. We'll set him off as a. As a red dragon. And this is a number two rigger of the Daily Valley, so it's quite small. So we should just get. this and it's getting quite muted now because of course it's working like the rigger 
like we wanted before, the water is slowly diluting that colour. So we've kind of got a soft orange colour. And again we want another little dunk to do the other side to make him even. Oh, sorry, oh, goodness me. So sorry about that. I nearly jumped out of my skin. <laughs> and normally Alf is fairly good. If there's anything, anybody moving around in the house, though, he's uh, just a rat bag. So I want to go a tiny bit darker now. So I'm going to start here. So by the time it gets to here, it's muted down almost to that colour. So there's not much difference. And then of course we can go out. Oh, that was a bit watered down, wasn't it? So we've got this deep red dragon coming along now. So when you get to a bigger space, you can actually go to a bigger... Can go to a bigger um, a bigger brush just want to see that so this is almost neat is this I'm just dipping back into that little well of color. I really like how that morphs into into that colour, and then maybe um, it's almost a pink. It's probably too much on that brush. And again, this is a fairly quiet way to work. Just stroking in that lovely soft liquid watercolour so there's no mixing. There's no mixing with water to get the right consistency. It's liquid and it's there. And it just flows off the brush. So this is just a play because I can't remember what to do with these these paints so it's just a bit of a play but I remember that this is a completely different way than I worked um, oh I know what I did I worked in the aviary didn't I yes I'd forgotten it's a different way that's what I made the mistake was this is working in the aviary so you can take a drop of colour to nothing and get that lovely watercolour effect. But you can only do that from a dry palette. So the damp brush onto my watercolour palette here is how you do it. So you touch the colour with a damp brush. This is all kind of almost dry. You touch the colour and then you manipulate the colour with a rigger and it slowly makes the colour go lighter and lighter 
and lighter. When you use it out of a wet palette, which is what I'm doing, you're going to get instant vibrant colour. You're not going to get any difference at all. It's going to be so vibrant, you're not going to get like a watercolour effect. So there's two ways to use these. And I'd forgotten that as well, so apologies. So, I quite like the purple and reds. <laughs> oh yes, but they do, don't they? They're terrible little monsters. So I shall do this one, but one of the other ones I'm going to do in, in a muted colour, so I want to have a dry palette. So I'm going to make a dry palette in a second when I do this, and then that's going to give me a completely different look. And of course it shows how many shades of colour you can get from one 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 colour without mixing anything else. So I've got another pink there, so I'm gonna dip into the I think this is the magenta so it's a little bit pinkier, but I think you might want to go pinkier as he's going along. And again this is not the colours I would normally pick, just having a play in this um, introductory page in uh, Mythomorphia. So thanks for stopping by guys. I didn't expect to be doing this today but um, I was just so thrilled to get this book. I had to, I just had to um, start playing in it. So I'm hoping I'm not going to neglect my animorph here and my imaginorph here because they've got a lot of work to do in there as well. So these are all dead flat colours even though they're vibrant and bright. So I have no idea what colour I'm going to do. I think I'll probably do him the ready colour, I think. So we can kind of morph him out of that one. This is actually watered down, this one. This is the one that I diluted, so it is a bit paler, this one, so it might look quite good. So, this is been quite nice to just manoeuvre this colour around. <clears throat> so the first one that's been released is the French version. I bought this from Amazon so I didn't expect it to arrive in French but it doesn't actually bother me at all that it's in French. 
So there's a little bit of give in this because it's watered down this colour, but I think I quite like that. And the best thing to do when you get these, if you get these hydras, is to have a plate, like always, photocopy first. And then once you can use these watercolours on photocopy paper, you can use them in uh, on any thin paper at all. And what I should have done is what I practice what I preach, just put a little bit of a protective paper on the next page because these are they are so vibrant. You would swear they were inks. They are not. They're professional watercolours, but you would swear they were inks. And so anything they touch turns into this colour. So very different from what I normally do. Oopsie. Very different from what I normally do. I'll just pan out and then we can see. They're very vibrant colours. Um, but I think this book is going to be more vibrant than the others. So again, love the teals and the greens. Uh, and the vibrant colours. So this is going to be quite a good book to, um, to play in, I think. Oh, hi, Suzanne. Welcome to Bunny Designs. Your little boy's been naughty. <laughs> so welcome, everybody, to Bunny's Designs. I'm having a play in my... Da, da, da. Mythomorphia, which arrived in the post this morning. So I did an unboxing and an entire flip. But I'm playing with my Dr. Martin's Hydras liquid watercolours. And I've just put a, a drop of the colours into my old palette that I'd used before. And it's a long time ago, so they've, they've done quite well, bless them. And they've reconstituted into some really nice, awesome bright colours. So has anybody got any questions? <clears throat> He did a lot of barking, and he just barked at nothing, Suzanne. <laughs> He's sat looking at me now. Because he wants to go out. Come here. Be a good boy. Alfie, come here. He's just sitting looking at me. I just moved the... Oopsie. We'll have an Alfie cam for a second. No. So... He's completely ignoring me. Oops, there he is, look. He going to come here? Good boy. No. <laughs> no. He's not. Don't want to make everybody sick. No, he's not going to do anything we want him to do today. So he's just being that naughty boy. But he looks at you so cute, but he just will not behave himself. <laughs> oh, we've got a butterfly here. Let's have a look at some more colours. And I'm terribly, terribly worried I'm going to get gunk all over this. <laughs> all over this book. There's a butterfly, but I think there's another butterfly somewhere, isn't there? Oh, we've got, um, it's actually a... A deer, but he's got his antlers are in trees. So let's see if we can get some nice greens. Have a look at the greens. So I mean, that's the difference between cleaning my baby wipe. The colours are extremely vibrant, but they're good. Oh, have they gone? <laughs> Alfie, Alfie, oh, what's this? What's this? Completely nothing. Alfie, come here. Come here. You're going to be a good boy now. 
he looks so cute since we've cut all his fur off. <laughs> he looks so cute. No, cut his fur off. No, Su Suzanne, you may not, because this is in French. Not quite sure why it's in French, but it's in French. Illustrated by Kevin Rosanne. This is the little boy this morning in bed, having his cup of tea. So we've cut his, his hair off. He's a little short boy now. So he will not do as he's told. He just wants to sit there and be centre of attention. <laughs> centre of attention is our little boy. Let's see if he's come back now. Let's have a look. I'm not sure the camera will actually pick him up. Don't have a lot of so he's under the table by my feet. Healthy, you've been a good boy. He looks so good, but he's not. <laughs> I know we can't stroke it and do that at the same time, can we? Hmm? You've been a good boy. He's such a cute boy though with his little girl ears. He's got little girl ears now. But they don't get in his dinner. So he's got little girl ears. We've turned you into a little girl, haven't we? And you're slipping off. <laughs> That's got to be uncomfortable, Alfie. So there's the Alfie Cam cheeky boy. He's always got bits on the end of his nose. I know I'm going to stop stroking you. So there's the Alfie Cam. His little girl ears. He cut all this off underneath here to stop it getting all manky because he gets really really grumpy don't you he get gungy so we've got little girl ears and he has no fur on him because we sat watching can you get any further alfie alfie come here he's had he's had a bit of a crop <laughs> he's had a bit of a crop so it's all uneven bless him but it's more comfortable but we can't possibly take him to be to be clipped because he'd bite everybody. And he's got rid of all his feathering. There was a carrier bag full, wasn't there, for the birds? Hmm? You would be a good boy now. And he's got my daughter's old onesie underneath. Did he go to cup? No, he's not going to cup because he wants to be stroked. <laughs> so that's the Alfie camp. So when he's good, he's very good, but when he's bad, he's horrid. He's our little elf. Was that your weekend fix, Suzanne? <laughs> yes, you wouldn't say bless him if you know what he's just done on the kitchen floor. He looks at you, I haven't done anything, mummy. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. I'm going to have a go at these bright, I've made some greens, I made two greens because you get a phthalo green and a phthalo blue in this new set but you don't get a different green but there are lots of, there's about 140 colours but they're about seven or eight pounds each so I'm a tight Yorkshire lass um, and I've just made a cadmium yellow so I don't need to make a cadmium yellow, I have a lemon yellow and a gamboge um, and a yellow ochre but there wasn't, I need, I need a cad red but I've made a cad red that's about a cad red and that's a cad yellow so I've made those by two drops of the red and one of the yellow and two drops of the yellow and a tiny little bit of gamboge and I love gamboge it's 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 kind of a light it's actually a tangerine color look it's not it's not quite an orange it's a tangerine color and I love that and it's called gamboge it's very famous Lots and lots of artists swear by it, but I love it. I have to say it's one of my faves. So I've managed to make a lot of colours. Now, what I would have liked to have done is to buy the Cad Red, and I completely forgot about it when my daughter took me to this shop that sell these individually. And I think they're about five or six pounds. Um, but 
if you've got six, you know, because these are so they got one and a half, a half a US, a half US fluid ounce or 15 mil. So you only want a couple of drops and it's still vibrant. So if you work out even four drops for making different colours, you can make hundreds of colours. So when I get that, I shall make a colour wheel with just six colours. So you could have six professional watercolours. You could have six bottles of hydrus, um, and you can and you can still get a big array of colours without having tons and tons of expensive supplies. You can still mix your own colours and then get all those gorgeous other colours in between. I mean, the greys and the browns you can make with all these colours would be fantastic. Yeah, gamboge is awesome. It's it's almost like I say a tangerine colour. That's straight out of the bottle. Now this is Dr. Martin's Hydras, and these are professional fine art watercolours. There's another set which are a little bit cheaper, um, and again there's about a hundred colours in that, and they're really like turquoises and purples and pinks and fluorescent colours, um, very vibrant colours. So this is quite a nice. Um, this is sign of the dogs just pobbling around. Um, during the sorry, during the week when everybody's at work. Oh, sorry, it's my husband. I just shut the door, my husband. <laughs> I thought it was a dog trying to get a cat trying to come in and out. Um, but my daughter's got the boys out upstairs, so they would be history if he got up. So you've got to have the Hydra's fine art ones, and these are light fast. Mm -hmm. But have a look at um, YouTube videos. Uh, some some artists do amazing things with these. I just like them in my little watercolours. So they're really fantastic. They're a little bit expensive. I think I paid sixty some pounds for a set. Um, but you don't need the set. You can have the two yellows, the two reds, and the two blues. I intend to do a colour wheel with these. Um, in fact, my daughter's home soon. I've not. I must ask her to go today or tomorrow and I wanted to get me the cad red but having said that I've made cad red cad red is um, a drop of gamboge sorry the bright yellow or gamboge into the bright pink now you can't make pink out of the cadmium red but you can make cadmium red out of the pink and what what you do is you make the orange first and then you put a drop of orange into the pink and it gives you cad red the yellow i made with the bright yellow and one drop of one drop of um gamboge which is a kind of an orangey red or an orange into bright lemon yellow a tiny amount and you will get cad yellow so you can still make the cad yellows it's just I, it would make it easier for me to do it with two yellows two reds and two blues and I haven't got the th uh, the selenium blue either. But with six bottles of this, I wish I'd not bought the full set. I wish I'd bought six individual ones because I would have made better colours. So if you can get them individually, you want a cadmium red, you want a cadmium yellow, you want the light yellow Hansa, and you want French ultramarine or ultramarine, and you want a thalo blue. Or maybe a sky blue. I don't think they call it phthalo blue. But you want the brightest, coolest blue you can get. And then there isn't a colour you can't make. You would make this colour wheel here. Because I made it out of two blues, two reds and two yellows. So I'm actually, I've actually got quite a few of these. I've found them. I will wash one out and I will... I'll make the I'll make the six colours. I'm going to have to make because you can't make phthalo blue. It's impossible to make phthalo blue. Oh, sorry, cerulean blue. You can make a darker blue, but you can't take the darkness out of a light blue. It's impossible. Has anybody got any questions? But you don't have to use them for fine art. They are beautiful for colouring. 
these are more vibrant than the ink tense or the peerless or they're the same that they are very very vibrant don't have to I, I i am not a watercolorist but i like to color with different things um i'm struggling a bit today but we'll have a go so i'm going to make some greens here um i made two greens in fact i made this green with the hansi yellow so there is quite a lot and they are liquid so they come out like a liquid um they come out like single cream that's what they're like so there's so much color on here so i think i'm going to actually touch that's the number one i'm going to touch this with the number two brush And that's what I wanted before, but I think there's still too much on here, really. Yeah, for this small space. So that's quite a nice colour, is that? And then next to it is the darker one that I've made. I made two greens this morning because we didn't have a pea green. So again, I really like this nice way of working. But instead of having all these bottles, I've got them. I've got one drop. Right, it is a bit messy now, but I have one drop of every colour on here. So I've got my phthalo green, my purples, my reds, um, my yellow greens, and then here I've got the greens on the other side. I've got my yellow ochres. And they are dry, they're a bit sticky, but they are dried. But you have to lay them completely flat, otherwise it'll just run off, because it's just like water. The, the consistency is definitely like water. Uh, so instead of dipping into, I mixed it, you see, that's why it was like that. You just touch the edge of your palette and then you can get these gorgeous colours. And it must be tea time. It must be tea time. So, unfortunately, he's not allowed to bark, really. <laughs> I wish somebody would tell him. Come on, Suzanne, tell him he's not allowed to bark. My daughter puts the muzzle on him when he barks to teach him not to. <coughs> Nigel, darling. Nigel, yeah. just, just show him this muzzle, will you? Just shut him up. Right. Just show him the muzzle to shut him up. Oh, I've lost it. Is it... Samantha will go pot it if we don't keep him. Just give me a second. He only put it on for a second, but it works. Nigel, yeah. just show him that. Right. Yes, I know, but it shuts him up. You can't train one. The thing is, you with dogs, you've got to be consistent, and she's training him. And just showing the muzzle stops him barking all the time. <laughs> that means the big fat lurcher, who's the size of a Labrador. She's a Labrador, but she's a lurcher, really. Sorry about that. It's feeding time at the zoo. Apologies for non-pet people. It's a bit of a zoo around here. So I like the fact that I'm getting different things. Did you make him sit first? Yeah. No. That's the only problem. You've got to be consistent with them. Otherwise, they're like children. I 
Oh, I've just realised. Um... Oh dear, her name's gone. Um... Little P, little phantom. If you have a look on her videos, she's used a different version, but it's cheaper. And I just can't think what you call them. I can't think what you call them, but Little P did a video, Little Phantom did a video about her her version of these, these liquid watercolours. But um, just for the life of me, I cannot think of the name. But they are a bit cheaper, but they're still very vibrant. So have a look on her videos because it was very good, um, the comparison. Okay, so thank you very much for joining me. Um, I'm going to finish now because I've been playing in here in my wonderful... And again, I love the fact that they're actually dry now as well. So even though it's a watercolour, it's dry. So thank you for my first play watching in my Mythomorphia. Thank you for watching.